What's up guys, today I want to talk about the iPhone 15 Pro Max versus the iPhone 16 Pro Max Pro. So most of the new stuff with the iPhone 16 is AI based and it's not going to be fully available until March, halfway until the next phone comes out. A lot of the specs like the camera and lenses are pretty much the same with some minor updates. If I were to get the iPhone 16, it would be for the bigger battery and the faster charging. I don't really use Siri, and I don't care if Siri is integrated with ChatGPT. I do use ChatGPT a lot. I'm fine with just opening it up, but I'm fine with just opening the app up. I don't have to ask my phone to do it for me. The iPhone 16 feels unfinished. I don't really like the shutter button. I like the idea of the shutter button, but I think they should make it an actual physical button rather than what they did. It just doesn't feel quite finished. If it was an actual physical shutter button, and maybe you could stick an actual grip on there and use that, that would be pretty cool. If we were to compare the iPhone to the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, I think Apple's color science is better. I've always been happy with the color science out of an iPhone. The specs are better on the Samsung, but for me, I still prefer the look of the iPhone. For me personally, I would stick with the iPhone 15 Pro Max right now. The Pro or the Pro Max, but I like that 5 times lens better than the 3 times lens. I really like filming in log and putting a LUT on it. I use that Stallman LUT. Kino is a really good app because it applies the LUT in camera. I'll show some footage. I'll show some photos and some footage that I filmed on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm pretty impressed with this stuff. I'm so I have cameras, but I'm pretty impressed with the stuff that I'm getting off the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I don't think you need the 16 unless you care about those AI features. That's really what they updated. We all know that AI is just these little demons inside of our phone that just make stuff up and lie a lot. Well, maybe not, but some of us think that. So a lot of this footage is done with the Stallman 3 LUT from Kino. Tyler Stallman has some good colors and it's so easy to film with that. It applies that LUT to the log footage and films in 4K at 24 frames a second. So there's really no reason to ever have to color grade again or to bring a camera with you while you're paddle boarding. I've done that before and it didn't end well. So I still have cameras. This is a camera channel and I also got a skateboarding channel where I use a fisheye a lot. But really there's no reason to have a camera because this kind of looks like I'm filming on a camera. It looks better than probably any camera I have. Does this look like a camera to you guys? Do you really need a camera in 2024? I'm going to show some video footage and some photos that I shot recently on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Not even the newest iPhone out. And tell me what you think in the comments below. Do I really need a camera? With the Kino app and Tyler Stallman 3 LUT, I can film really cinematic footage on my iPhone that looks like I spent a lot of time color grading with plenty of dynamic range because it's still using the algorithm to pull in all it probably sounds flawless do you really need a camera in 2024 i'm going to show some video footage and some photos that i shot recently on the iphone 15 pro max not even the newest iphone out and tell me what you think in the comments below do i really need a camera with the kino app and tyler stallman 3 lut i can film really cinematic footage on my iPhone that looks like I spent a lot of time color grading with plenty of dynamic range because it's still using the algorithm to pull in all the highlights and shadows and then it's turning that into log and then I'm putting a LUT over it. So the iPhone 15 Pro Max, iPhone 16 might be the best camera out there. And this camera fits in my pocket. You can get waterproof cases for it. If you break any part of it, you can find an iPhone repair store in any town. You could just buy another iPhone at Walmart if you break it. It's just so convenient. Also, you don't have to worry about someone stealing it because if they do steal it, you can track it with Find My Phone. You can also call people on it. You can't call people on a Canon, Fuji, or Nikon. Maybe in the future, maybe DJI's new camera, you can call somebody. I heard they're teaming up with Huawei. All right, so here is the Kino app with the Stallman LUT applied. And we're using the main camera lens. I've also got a little flippy screen on top, which really helps. 
What's up guys? Today I'm testing out the DJI Mic 2 and I'm comparing it to two really cheap mics that you can get on Amazon. So if you have the money, the DJI Mic is significantly better. It has better sound quality. It doesn't pop and all that stuff. But it's not 10 times better and it is 10 times the price. So right now, I'm not using any of those mics. I'm using the Rode Go 2. So this is a shotgun mic. And if you're gonna just shoot a wide shot like this, I would go with the shotgun mic. Because if you wear a little, because if you're wearing a Bluetooth mic, you're probably gonna get thyroid cancer. Now, don't sue me for saying that, but we don't know that's true, but that's probably true. I think the DJI mic is the best wireless mic you can get if you have to have a wireless mic. But if you don't have to have a wireless mic, I would prefer having a mic like this where you just plug it in and go. If you're not gonna be super far away from the camera, this is the best way to go. Dealing with all the Bluetooth and stuff is a headache. Also, the DJI mic doesn't work with that Belkin stage. I can't use both at the same time. So you can't track me and record audio at the same time, but it does work with the cheaper mics. So if I can't use that stage to film me with the Bluetooth mic, why would I need a Bluetooth mic? Because the reason I was using it is because I was walking around the skate park and getting that audio while I was far away from the camera. So I'm not gonna use, I have to use them at the same time for there to be any benefit there. If not, I just record my audio like this. This audio sounds fine, I'm sure. And it works every time with the standard camera app. So this is what the setup looks like. You know, I would honestly switch to Pixel or Samsung if they didn't have flares, because flares are the worst thing about the iPhone. You see that flare? So you might say, well, you were indoors. Of course that audio sounds good, but what does it sound like outside in nature? So there's an ambulance going on over there, wind blowing through the trees. This is the road go-to on the iPhone 15. It probably sounds flawless. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, scroll through my channel, check out my other videos, and hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching.